to overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. Today we are joined with Nina Bingham. She is the author of Messages from Metatron. Nina, could you please introduce yourself? Let people know just a little more about you, please. Sure. Hi, Ed. It's wonderful to be here. Um, I'm an author and a life coach and a clinical hypnotherapist and a sound therapist um, from Tucson, Arizona. What else do you want to know? So, <laughs> well, uh, we want to know everything. Okay. <laughs> That's what podcasting is about. Uh, That's it's I'm a here. fascinating book that you wrote, and it covers meditations or messages from Metatron. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people might not know who Metatron is. Mm -hmm. So could you start there and explain who Metatron is for the people? Sure. Well, I didn't know who Metatron was either. Um, my experience with angels um, was, you know, like most people's, I, I've heard of angels, and um, I was I was raised when I was a kid. I was I was a Christian, so I'd heard about them, you know, in the Bible, and then sometimes in church they would talk about angels, and so it was kind of a vague concept for me. Um, and, and and I'd heard also about guardian angels, you know, that everybody has this guardian angel, and and I knew from personal experience that I'd I'd been through a lot of close scrapes in my life, and it did at times it did seem like there was an intervening force there you know to keep me safe or, or keep me from you know dying or you know whatever the the crisis was there it seemed like there was something that always intervened you know and and i never thought much of it until um until i met metatron and that totally changed my life so metatron is an archangel which archangels is just the, the word archangel means chief so chief angel and there's there's according to the bible there's literally millions of angels in the universe um there's a little less of the of the archangels they're quite, kind of the bosses of the regular angels metatron is the boss of the archangels so He's sort of the head honcho in terms of archangels are concerned. Um, and I never even heard the name Metatron uh, at all because it's not in the Bible. And, and so I hadn't heard anything about Metatron um, until I had an encounter with, with an archangel when I was, um, I was just a girl in high school and I had a real serious injury to my sciatic nerve. And when that happened in the middle of the night, I had, um, I don't, I don't like to say miracles because it just, a lot of times people will say, oh, it was a miracle. And then later on you find out it wasn't a miracle, you know? So I don't like to say it was a miracle, but something happened that I can't explain. Um, and that was, uh, I went to bed and the doctor told me that day, you're not going to be able to walk for at least a month or maybe months if you're going to walk at all. I mean, it was a really serious thing. And in the middle of the night, I woke up and I just saw this huge light, like coming in from the doorway, just so bright that I couldn't look at it. And I, my first thought was, because I'm the oldest of three kids, and I'm in high school at that time, I thought, you know, my sister and brother left the lights on, you know, because there's this light flooding in. And I thought, oh, great, mom's going to be mad. So I started to get up, and then I, and then it hurt. And I realized, oh, yeah, then I remembered, you can't move. And so I'm sitting there, and then this, this thought in my head says, just lay down and go to sleep. It's going to be all right. Just lay down. And then boom, I was out, you know, and I woke up in the morning, Ed, and, um, and it was weird because my, my leg didn't hurt. And I'm like, huh, that's kind of weird. So I got up out of the bed and I could walk and like the pain was gone. Like it was gone. It was just gone. 
after seeing this light in my room. And so, you know, I ran to my mother who's asleep and she had her own beauty salon and she was a single mom. So she slept in on the weekends and I wake her up on the weekend and I'm like, mom, did you leave all the lights on last night? You know, and she was like, no, I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. There were no lights on when I got up. And, you know, I talked to my brother and sister later and they hadn't laid up, left any lights on. So, um, you know, I didn't know what it was and I just kind of left it there. I was really grateful because I could go back to my normal life after that. I mean, there wasn't anything wrong with my leg after that. Um, so I guess you could call it a miracle. I don't know. Um, and, but, but I believe that that light that I saw was actually Metatron. So I think Metatron has been with me my whole life. Um, he's a pretty powerful guy. And I think if he wanted to heal your leg, he probably could. So um, it wasn't until I, my daughter passed away. And when I was, she was 15. And this was in 2013, she passed away. She actually committed suicide. Um, she was on antidepressants. And um, she was scared that they were going to make her fat. And so she stopped taking them without telling anybody. And, you know, they were the kind of antidepressants that you can't cold turkey. Um, and she knew that. She just thought like every teenager that she could handle it. Well, she couldn't. And three days later, she took her own life as I was sleeping in the next room. So um, after that occurred in 2013, um, I, that's when about a year later, it was about the first anniversary of my daughter's death that for the first time she made contact with me. Um, and I don't know if you believe in that either, but a lot of people in America actually do believe that they've had some sort of contact with their loved ones who have passed on. So I hadn't heard anything from her for like a year. And I just kind of figured I wasn't going to hear anything. Um, and I was walking one night and all she said to me, she, she was a, a girl of very few words. She's a very quiet girl. And all she said to me was, mama, listen for the voice. Just listen for the voice. And I was like, okay, you know, and I thought, wow, I just heard my daughter's voice because I know her voice. So, and I didn't know what she meant and she didn't say anymore. And then boom, she was gone. So I was like, okay, this is getting weird. And then it was about a month after that, that I started receiving the messages from Metatron. So that's kind of all how it happened. Very interesting. Uh, now, there is a supernatural to this world. I've, I've had many experiences myself with that. Mm -hmm. And it actually has been following me since childhood. Mm -hmm. So some of these encounters a lot of people would not understand and i hardly talk about it but mm -hmm. through that it sent me on a journey to discover yes. what this is and yes. there are many religions and many opinions many outlooks on this mm -hmm. but a lot of those opinions are driven out of one religion and yes. no other type of substance to back what they are actually teaching or wanting other people to adhere to. Yes. So when we dive into religion, if you're going to talk about it, you should actually dive into the subject matter very deep. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, we see this as a hobby and uh -huh. we we read these books oh yeah you know, yeah okay. and we we have many many <laughs> books that well, you know, we dive you, into then you probably know ed if if you're reading that book the book of enoch uh when i was yes. doing yeah when i was doing research on metatron to get to know who the heck this person this person was yes this angel was um he supposedly wrote the book of Enoch. And so I'm, I'm sure that you, you already know that. Yes. Well, Enoch is mentioned in the Bible, as you stated, and he found favor with God. So Enoch did not suffer a death per se. He was transformed. Mm -hmm. He was taken up. Right. This is very interesting when we talk Metatron because... Uh, Metatron was taught 
about the entirety of God's plan. Mm -hmm. And he holds the keys that nobody else holds. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting when I saw this, I, what the heck? You know, hmm. messages yeah, that from is, Metatron. That is interesting. And you're reading a book that supposedly he wrote. Well, that's really cool. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> uh, Enoch is a very interesting uh, individual. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those subject matters that Christians really haven't dived in deep enough to. You yes. know, like they expelled the book of Enoch, the Hebrew book of Enoch. Mm -hmm why you know if if enoch was favored amongst god and walked with god why would you exclude that writing and try to you know suppress it for so long yeah I very don't have interesting an to that. <laughs> yeah neither do i but yeah. you know i've had many interviews now and quite a few are going to come out on the season that you're actually coming out on where we scrape some of this you know we talk mm -hmm. about some of the abnormals and mm -hmm. i'm one i don't care i want to know i want to dive in and understand the taboo subjects Do so I. we we are here for a very short time mm -hmm. how much of that time do we want to spend arguing mm -hmm. and this is a message from jesus himself to love thy enemy mm -hmm. so we're not here to argue about it. We're here to observe, watch for signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. And, you know, during the end times, we're going to talk about the two witnesses. I believe Enoch might be one of those witnesses, in my opinion. So it's powerful when that name comes up to me. I, I'm a firm believer. But a lot of christians are going to be offended by this in many right. ways the book yeah. has so much topic that many of us are sore about and we want to argue about That's you touch right. about transgender you know you talk about mm -hmm. some of these issues that jesus himself was actually telling us to forgive love and not argue and fight about traditions of men right so let's dive into <laughs> why did metatron contact you in the first place yeah um so i an asked answer to that of course i asked that question <laughs> because so my background is professionally is completely not any of this okay so um uh i've got two degrees undergrad degrees in psychology okay so i, I know a lot about human psychology and development. And then I've got a master's of science and mental health counseling. So I, for 18 years, I was a life coach and mental health counselor. I worked for the state of Oregon. And I know that's where you're broadcasting from today. Yeah, Oregon. Um, I actually, I lived there for 25 years. I worked downtown in Portland, Oregon. Um, and so I've just been here in Tucson for a couple of years and I'm enjoying the sunshine like crazy. Um, but uh you know, my background has been um, psychology and mental health, and then I became a writer. Um, my first book was some poetry, and after the poetry, I wrote a clinical book on addiction. So, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm necessarily a likely person for something like this. And so when the thought started coming to me, and these messages, there's 30 messages in the book, when these messages started coming to me so strong that I literally couldn't think of anything else and until I wrote them down. I mean, it was like a tape recorder, you know, at, at full speed, and you can't focus on anything else until you get them the heck on some paper, okay? That's what it was like. It was overwhelming. Um, and when it first happened, I was completely against this because I thought, I thought, who's going to believe me first off? You know, oh, I'm talking to an angel. Oh, really? You're crazy. And you're a mental health counselor. You know, it's like, it's, it's almost like they pick me because I'm a mental health counselor. It's like, you know, let's pick the person who's, who's working with crazy people. Anyway, it, and it just seems like the other side has a sense of humor that way. <laughs> so I was totally against this. I was like, I don't like this woo-woo stuff. 
I, I'm a researcher. I'm a huge researcher. And that's kind of maybe why they did pick me because I love the research and dig. I'm a digger like you. Um, and I don't take anybody's word for it. I want to know the truth. And sometimes the truth is found in books and not necessarily what people are telling you. So maybe that's one reason. But when I asked them, um, when I asked Metatron, why me? <laughs> and he just said, you're open heart. You have an open heart. And with angels, it's all about your heart. They don't really care what you do for a living. They don't care what degrees you have. Uh, they don't care how much money you have. None of that stuff matters to an angel. The only thing that matters to them is, is your heart open? Do you have an open mind? And it's just exactly what you were saying. If you have an open mind, then I think some, some very interesting uh, revelations await you because that's all, that's all it takes. It's just an open mind and then being willing to ask questions, being, being curious and being willing and open to asking questions. And that's all they ever told me. So that's, that's the best answer I got, Ed. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes we, we elude the answers, really. Uh, they're, they're sometimes hidden within the message themselves. So we have to be careful, take it slow and easy, and understand, you know, myself, I was injured and I was ready to just give up. I was done with the world and I didn't want anything to do with anything anymore. Mm. Uh, I gave up and I wanted out of it. That's when I was slapped by God, basically, you know, and I don't know uh, how deep you are into everything, but I actually speak with God personally. He doesn't always answer and his answers aren't words, you know. He's not in my head. He doesn't talk. Mm -hmm. He slaps me in different ways to wake me up. Mm -hmm. And if if you're listening in the right way, mm -hmm. you're in tune to what is happening. Mm -hmm. During think... my injury, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, my... your open heart is exactly why you're receiving information, because you're open to it, and that's really all it takes. Yeah, it's a wonder. I, I still question a lot of things, you know, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm open and I'm tuning into what is happening around me, not only in the physical world, but mm -hmm. the in physical the the spiritual you know the yes. universe is large and we have no clue like the depth of the ocean what it's about so when i was injured i really went through a bout of depression that my wife couldn't even understand who and what i was going through and that really hurts me when my own wife is telling me, hey, you've got some issues, what's happening? Well, as I'm putting my belongings into a little storage shed and moving my wife and my animals into a little minivan to live, I'm about finished with that and I have a mental breakdown and I have this FU fight with God himself in the parking lot of the storage facility. Mm -hmm. My wife, she's inside and she's kind of running out saying, what the, who are you talking to? You know, who are you screaming at? This can really throw people into turmoils when things like this happen when you think why are you doing this are you talking to me and why not mm -hmm. when i first really talked to god is when my mother died and the answer i got is just overwhelming and that's another story and i've spoken of it in previous podcasts but when we tune in and listen and we're receptive and we don't care what people think mm -hmm. and what we're going to be 
betrayed as and or portrayed as and the betrayal that we'll receive from people that are closest to us. Mm -hmm. The world's hard enough. Why throw all of this on top of an individual is beyond me, but obviously you've got a message and what that message is has to get out in whatever time frame he has set mm -hmm. and it's up to us to do what he's called us to do no matter where it takes us and you mentioned an incident remember saul he turned into paul because he mm -hmm. was one of those that persecuted christ in the most cruel ways mm -hmm. but yet he's the one that God reached down and touched mm -hmm. and turned those people that actually are touched by God or by a messenger of God. Mm -hmm. You'd better listen to them. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those things. You know, one thing that uh, <clears throat> as you're talking uh, that occurred to me, you, you asked me earlier, what is it? Uh, why do you think that, you know, you were chosen to do this work. And, um, you know, as you were talking, one thing that popped into my mind is that oftentimes people are chosen for these, these um, spiritual, I'll just call them missions. I don't know what else to call them. Spiritual missions um, because they're passionate people. Okay. And I, I think that it does take a fair amount of passion if you're going to pull something like this off. Because <laughs> to tell people who, have just dimly heard of an angel and that's all they know about it. And to ask them to, to believe that an angel is actually talking to a mental health counselor and she's writing down what, what he's saying into many books um, is kind of a leap, okay, for most people. So you've gotta be really a passionate person to pull something like this off. Um, and I think that's another requirement. You know, um, I've always been a passionate person. I've, what I've, I like to say, whatever I do, I do it 110%. You know, even if it's make a mistake, I'm going to make it 110% of a mistake. So everybody knows I made the mistake. I'm just that kind of a passionate person about things. And I think it takes that. Um, what do you think in order to, to do this kind of work? Yeah, passion drives everything, especially <laughs> in the physical world. Because without passion, you have no energy. And that yeah. passion really makes you plug into the energy that you're part of anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and the other, the other thing you said that I really like, um, <clears throat> and I really relate to is that you've got to not care about what people think. And I think that was my main objection, you know, um, when this all first started going through my head and coming to me, all these messages and stuff. And I was just like, you know, what are people going to think? I mean, I must've said that a hundred times you know, and that was the main objection. And, and I really had to get over that. And at this point, I can honestly say, I don't care because the message that's in the books is so positive. Really Metatron is trying to say two things in this, in this book messages for Metatron. Um, and I'll have to tell you about the new book that I've got coming out this spring too. <clears throat> Angels again. Um, but this book's message is pretty clear. It says that we're all one. Okay. So all the divisions that we see and they're always calling out and we're always fighting about mean absolutely nothing in the afterlife. And, and really, they don't mean very much here either. We just blow them up and pretend like they mean something, okay, so that we could be right about what we want to be right about. But in his book, he keeps saying over and over, you guys aren't getting it. We're all one. Okay, I'm you, you're me. We're all in this together. And I, th I think that's a big message in, in this book. Um, what would say the other message is? Uh, you know, he talks a lot about the, the afterlife. And um, basically, I think he, he keeps trying to say in different ways that this isn't all there is. And that um, not only can we have hope for the afterlife um, and that, it, yeah, it's a better place, 
but that we need to be mindful of what we're doing with our lives now so that we, when we get there, right, we're happy with, with what we did with our life. So keeping not just today before us, but that, you know, we're going to answer for this life that we have lived. And, it, and we probably need to keep that in the forefront as we're making our decisions going about life. So it's an important book because I think it brings out those two themes. Yeah, transformation is part of life in mm -hmm. everywhere we look. You know, look at a butterfly. It starts mm -hmm. as a larvae or before a larvae, but it's laid, a larvae comes out, it cocoons up. During that cocooning and that transformation to a butterfly, there's a lot of turmoils going on inside, a lot of heat that is transforming us into beauty, just like that butterfly. And that's what our life here on this earth is truly about. You know, the Bible itself talks about the cup of wrath is not filled yet and you know we we have to understand if we get filled up with all of this chaos and anger and hurt and violence we don't want it anymore so when we open the cocoon up and we fly away from that spewing mess that we were in it's going to be a beautiful thing. A lot of people have trouble even relating with that because they're so into the physical world because the physical world's pretty demanding. Now, in your book, uh, it talks about uh, us being like a hologram, mm -hmm. a projection. My question to that is, if if we are a illusion, a hologram, why do we have all of the sensory, the understanding, the touch, the feel, the hostilities? Why would the hologram itself fill that? Right. Um, I guess the only um, answer, because I'm not, that's the other thing that was my objection to being the author of this book is that I don't know anything about physics. And a lot of what Metatron talks about is connected to the to physics. And I, I didn't know anything about physics. I didn't understand parallel universes and um, all this stuff that he talks about. <laughs> Never even had a physics class in high school. So, um, so I can give you my best answer, but, but know that it's not coming from a person who, who's a physics major or knows very much about it. But um, a lot of times um, in this, I'm, I'm actually channeling a new book now. And I've asked some of these questions, okay? This kind of the same question you asked is like, why do we have to go through all this stuff? You know, all the, the, the negative emotions. Um, if, if this is, if God is just dreaming, okay? And we're God's dream. Why do we have to um, suffer? Why do we have to suffer so? Why is it so painful? Why can't it be a happy dream <laughs> and a pleasurable dream? You know, why does it have to be a dream that's got so much suffering and pain and grief? Um, and uh, basically, as I understand it, let's say God is dreaming and that this world that we're involved in and we're just a, a character in the dream, okay? The Hindus, I'm a Hindu, the Hindus believe that this is, they call it a Leela or um, a Leela means a play, a divine play, okay? So God is just playing and God is just dreaming, okay? And, and, and we're in the dream. And, um, and in your dream, when you dream, right, it, it seems real and you have emotions, you cry, you laugh, um, you feel pain in your, in your dream, don't you? So it's the same. Okay, we, we're going to we're going to as dream characters, we're going to experience all the things that that we would in our dreams, just like it's reality, so that we don't know the difference. Um, Hindus believe that this is not reality. They believe that that this is um, God's dream or God's play, God's lila. So um, that would be my answer: is that we are just characters in a dream, and we're experiencing things so that it looks real 
just like in a dream. And when you wake up, you realize, oh, wow, that wasn't real. That's so crazy because it seemed like it was so real. Sometimes I wake up and I go, whoa, okay, that seems so real, right? Those really realistic dreams. And that's the kind of dream we're, we're in. It seems really real and we're experiencing it like it's real. Well, I want to add to that, you know, I don't know how many of our listeners have or yourself have experienced what they call deja vu. Mm -hmm. You know, I have many, many times where, you know, as a child or a young adult, I might be sitting there having like a daydream or maybe it was a dream itself. And then many, many years later, here I am going, mm. wow, I already did this. <laughs> yes. Do, do you have an answer for that? I mean, is this part of this simulation or? Yes, it is. Um, Metatron does address that in this book. He addresses pretty much everything in this book. Um, but I don't know if you've gotten to that chapter, but he does talk about that. And he just says, uh, he gives a really kind of a simple answer. But he said that um, when we get that deja vu experience, he said, what's happening is it's like um, the character that I am now, okay, in this reality, um, in the parallel universes, there may be saying there's 20 of me, okay, there's, there's one of me and there's 19 parallel universes around me. And he says, what happens is, let's say I'm talking to you in this moment. And then all of a sudden I get a deja vu, like, ah, I know I did this before, but I know I didn't do this before, but I know I did. And he said, at that moment, it's like um, you in a parallel universe has the same experience. So you kind of land in time on the same spot, if I could say it that way. And when that happens, you both go Ugh, like this. So, I mean, you have to read it to, he gives it much better. <laughs> much better answer than I did but it's 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 um has to do with time I guess and our parallel selves yeah our universe our world is very mysterious you know my mm -hmm. wife and I were deep sleep one night and I had a uh orbital sander setting on the table in the living room not plugged in the coil wrapped around the cord wrapped around it and all of a sudden that thing went off and woke us up for some reason mm. you know wow. there's no physical way that thing could have started and you know waking us up so there's mm -hmm. a reason for all of these mm -hmm. things that occur to us yes some some of us are very closed mind and limited in scope because of I don't know why we we mm -hmm. limit ourselves in some reasoning or some form maybe it's a shock or uh, uh, I don't know hysteria sets in it's hard to say but people are in denial of what is around them beyond the physical and i i really think one of the good things about our talk today is people might open up to explore their world and their universe a little more clearly dive deeper into their beliefs it's not to condemn their belief it's to open them up to understanding what is beyond your understanding yes could you tell us more about your new book and what we can look forward to on that sure um so okay so one thing before we jump to the next book i, I just want to make sure i mention is uh, i'm starting a podcast um on january 21st which is my birthday next week I will be 58, and um, I've decided to do a podcast and turn it into a study group for the book. So anybody that um, has read the book, um, in the back of the book, there's a study guide, and there's um, uh, 30 
30 messages and 30 lessons that go with it. And so the podcast is going to be a study group where um, once a month, the third Friday of every month at 12 p.m., uh, 12 noon on CView Quantum Network, um, we're going to study it together. And we're just going to start with, you know, lesson one and go through the book. So if you're interested, anybody out there is interested in, in um, joining us, you know, you can call in and, and we're going to talk about the different um, subjects in the book and the questions that come up around it and it should be pretty stimulating stuff um but the next that's book, exciting could, yeah. could you send us the link so we can share in the show notes with our listeners please absolutely be happy to awesome i like it yeah um so this the next book is 10 archangels teach you how to live an inspired life so it's it's they're, they're uh, 10 different messages from these archangels are called the tree of life, according to like the Jewish Kabbalah and some of the Jewish mystical writings. Um, there's 10 different archangels. Um, and so I got met 10 different messages um, for the world. Um, and when I say the world, I mean, Metatron's book is very personal in a lot of ways. Um, this book is not so personal. It's these are big messages for a big world. And um, you know, some of them talk about the environment, like how the archangels feel about what's happened with our environment, like the end of the world subjects, like what's going to happen, you know, like what you guys need to do to plan for this. Um, I mean, just really some really big topics in this book. Um, and so that's coming out this spring, and I'm really excited to share that one. And I'm working on a new one, which we'll see how that comes out. <laughs> Before we skip on i want to touch about the artwork on the cover of metatron where did that come from and what inspired it yeah well i've never seen i don't see angels i know there's a lady in ireland that actually sees angels and she's kind of famous now i hear them i don't see them i'm i have Claire audience and and i've had it since i was about 11 years old so I've been hearing the other side for a very long time, um, uh, but I don't see them. I've never seen an angel. And frankly, I don't think I want to. Um, just writing their stuff down has been enough, <laughs> overwhelming at times. Enough for me, thanks. Um, so I don't, I don't see them. But when Metatron was talking to me, I kept getting a picture in my head. And maybe it was just my imagination making it up because I have a vivid imagination. But I kept seeing, um, you know, a bearded guy, um, little older guy, kind of serious, very intense. His eyes were very intense. And I kept seeing it over and over in my mind. And I, and I thought, OK, well, you know, it's because that's what you do. You know, if you're talking to somebody over the telephone and you never get a chance to see them, your mind is going to make up what they look like. So my mind made up this picture of Metatron. And so when the designer said, okay, well, what we need is we need a, a graphic. Can you find a graphic? Because I said, well, I want Metatron's face on, on the cover. And he says, well, I don't have any idea what it looks like. He said, I want you to go through some graphics and pick out a picture that looks like Metatron. And so I just started looking through, you know, artwork. And I, I, when I found it, it was just like, my gosh, it was him. Like, <laughs> it was like I'd seen it before. And it was, it was almost shocking because I, I knew immediately that's what I'd been seeing, okay? And so I grabbed the picture off the internet and I brought it to the designer. And what it is, what it was is a statue, picture of a statue. And it's a Viking, actually, picture of a, I guess. It doesn't look like a Viking. It looks like an angel to me. But um, so I took it to the graphic designer and he just kind of, you know, designed it from there. Um, but to me, it's exactly what Metatron looks like. Yeah, it reminded me of the face on the Shroud of Turin a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of odd and old and mm -hmm. rugged. And yes. It's kind of... But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so let's close with, do you have a call to action for people? Where can people find you? And how can people find your books? Okay, so um, you can find my books on Amazon.com. Just look up Nina Bingham and you'll find it. Or you can put in messages for Metatron and they'll all pop up. 
Um, I'm also, I've got a couple of books on Barnes and Noble, um, a couple of other places, but you can find them all together on Amazon. And then um, if you want to read more of my writing, um, I do have a self-help blog um, and it's ninabingham.blogspot.com. And uh, there's about 200 articles that I've written on there and, uh, you know, some media that I've done and um, a lot about the books on, on that. So you can go to that. And I also have a website that's devininabingham.com if you want to find out about me professionally. And do you have a call to action for people before we leave? Uh, well, if, if, you know, other than uh, uh, checking out the books, I would love it if people would check out the, uh, the new podcast starting on, on January 21st at 12 noon on Seaview Quantum Network. I would love it if people call in. Um, even if you haven't read the book, just call in and, and give us your opinion and ask some questions and things like that. It would be wonderful to have um, to have your opinion. And, and yeah, that'd be great. Well, I'm super excited to uh, get a hold of your next book because mm -hmm. this stuff intrigues me. You know, you don't have to agree, people. You just have to explore and open yourself to understanding the world around you. And that's what I like to bring on the Dead America podcast. Mm -hmm. And that's part of everybody feeling dead in America. You know, they're not open to differing opinions. And we don't have to fight. We need yes. to unite, get along, and understand we're all in it together. Thank you, Nina, for being here. It was a delight, and I'm super excited to share your story with people. Thanks, Ed. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.